What's up everybody, this is Vampire Survivors playing on PlayStation 5, it's also out on PS4 and PS5 today. My name is David Jagnow, aka The Jaggernaut, and today I'm going to talk you through my impressions and thoughts on the game. I played it previously on PC, mostly via my Steam Deck, it's also on Xbox and now PlayStation, I think it's on Switch as well. I don't know if there's a mobile port, but there are lots of mobile clones of this game. This game has really popularized this genre where you don't really attack, your character automatically attacks, you just move around the field. Uh, the way it works is you collect those blue orbs that increase your level, you get XP from those, you level up. Every time you level up, you get to pick a new upgrade or new weapon that affects how your character attacks, and the game slowly, gradually, and exponentially just gets more and more crazy the longer you play and the longer you survive. So you can see here, it's pretty low-key right now. It's just a few enemies, some bats, and, you know, a few things to dodge. But as you explore and as you get more weapons and more items, and you unlock new areas and levels and upgrades, the game gets dramatically more intense and crazy, which is all part of the fun. Uh, you basically just have to try to survive as long as you can, and uh, eventually get to new levels, and get to experience new portions of the game, and everything just gets crazier. As you can see here, look, there's big hordes of skeletons. One of the strategies you can use is to kind of try to stay near them so that you can collect the orbs as you take out enemies, but you want to sort of pivot and pace around them so you can kind of corral them into a circle. And uh, one of the tricks is to get them to pass over areas that are hazardous, like if you have any weapons that hurt them, um, like the little holy water pool that they'll step into and then and that takes them out. So what you want to do is you want to try to corral enemies into big groups, take them out in big numbers, and then double back over those spots to collect the orb so that you can level up. Uh, that's kind of the basis of the strategy of the game doesn't really evolve too much beyond that. It is a simple game, but that's not to say that's a bad thing. It's extremely addictive. It's one of those games where you really feel like you can just, you want to go one more time. And as you can see here, there's certain power-ups and, you know, different moments you'll reach that can wipe out an entire screen. You can find these treasure chests that give you big boosts of items quickly. Um, sometimes they have one, sometimes they have three items. And there's lots of different enemies that get added in. Every time you play, you'll have a different pool of weapons to upgrade from. So each time you play, it really does feel like you're playing a different game almost because it's always going to be different and changing. Enemies spawn in from different locations. The maps are huge, so there's a lot of room to move around and explore. And there's all different kinds of scenarios that can arise because of how dynamic the gameplay is. Um, it's, it's really remarkable given the fact that it's basically a game where you just control your character with a single analog stick. Um, thankfully there is co-op as well included. Um, I don't know about the other versions, but I know on PlayStation you can play up to four players. Uh, you each have different colors, which makes it easy to tell everyone apart. There are different characters to unlock. I'll show some of that later. There are different, um, you know, upgrades that you can unlock that are permanent upgrades. So as you play through the game, it is kind of like a roguelike where you have, you restart from the beginning every time you die. But there are some permanent upgrades to get accrued based on what you purchase in the upgrade store outside of the game. Um, so those will affect, you know, all the characters that you have. And then every character has a different bonus that affects how they play. Um, and you can see there, that was like a circle of plants that were slowly encroaching on me. Um, and so sometimes you're just going to have to burst through a line of enemies. Sometimes you won't be able to take them out in an efficient way, so you'll have to just kind of go through and take the damage. Um, some of the items you get can negate damage, some of it can increase your health. Um, there's all different types of items you get. It's not all offensive weaponry based, but most of them are. You can see that was a big chest I just got that added a whole bunch of new firepower for me. Um, a lot of the strategy of the game is deciding, you know, do you want to take a new weapon when you upgrade? Do you want to improve something you already have? Uh, for example, you know, earlier I added a second whip attack that hits forward and then backward. You can expand the range of the whip attack. You can add additional holy books that float around you, additional little balls of energy from the wand. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can upgrade your character and change over the course of the game. Um, you can see here there's some armor, there's different stuff like that. Um, this is all just the very first level too. I've only shown the first level so far. Um, as you progress through the levels again far enough and survive long enough, you'll unlock more levels that are all part of the base game. 
but then if you get the DLC, those levels are unlocked at the very beginning. So you can just jump directly to some of those DLC levels, which I'll show you right now. Yeah, so here's the different characters. Um, those coins that you get from the treasure chest are what you use to upgrade. So you can spend those coins to buy characters. You can spend them to buy, um, you know, actual account upgrades as well. Your power-ups is what that menu is. So I've got all four of these characters unlocked now. I'll check out uh, one of the other characters on a different level here in just a second. First, I'll show you these are some of your power-ups. Uh, like I said, these are uh, permanent upgrades that do apply to all of your characters. And then... Um, there's different unlocks you get as you, you know, reach certain levels, you get further in the levels, you get enough upgrades, you unlock and find new things. So we'll take a look at one of the DLC levels now and one of these other characters. So this one, um, her base attack is not a whip. Instead, she shoots like a little uh, projectile that goes through enemies, which is nice because it doesn't just stop at the first one it hits like a lot of the weapons do. This one actually goes through the enemy enemies and it continues forward past them. So you can hit entire groups and lines of enemies. You can hit multiple in a row, which is great. Um, I found it harder to play because it wasn't as large of an area to hit as the whip was. The whip was a little bit easier to predict and aim precisely the first character you get because it does kind of hit in that same motion out in front of you and then behind you once you upgrade it. I'm sure this character is probably great once you upgrade or attack more and you get further into the levels, but since I never played this level before, I was mostly focused on trying to explore. You can see that arrow that's kind of directing you towards one of the first objectives that you can get in the, in the DLC level, and so that's what I was kind of focused on trying to go towards. I didn't end up making it there before I got swarmed. Um, as you can see, these are all new enemies. All the DLC levels uh, tend to feature different enemy types from the base game. Um, we'll go into one of the other ones now. This is more of a fantasy theme. Uh, you can see there's like goblins and there's um, all different kinds of creatures in the different DLC levels, which is nice. It's visually, it's mostly just a visual difference because they are functionally all the same enemies. They just kind of swarm on you. Uh, but the way that they approach you and the speed and trajectory of how they approach you will be different. And then some of them do have attacks as well, in addition to their kind of slow advancing encroachment. Um, you'll see in just a moment, once I get further into this level, there's um, some enemies that come in from the sides that are much larger. Uh, there were some enemies here early on that are faster than the character, so you have to sort of anticipate their angle and then dodge them as they kind of rubber band back and forth chasing you, which made it really intense. Um, this one has like a maze later on that I'm about to get to that uh, was extremely stressful because I found myself eventually at a dead end and I had nowhere to go and then I was getting swarmed by the enemies and um, yeah so like I said pretty stressful the areas that are more open environments are a little bit easier to manage um, like that first level um, but yeah like, like I said I played this game previously on PC I played it a lot I probably had you know well over a dozen hours there um, so I'm really happy to see it on PlayStation because my preferred platform is PlayStation and I do play on my PS portal a lot um, so I'll be happy to be able to take this on the portal and play, you know, more easily and freely. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you haven't played Vampire Survivors, highly, highly recommend it. Like I said, super cheap game. You can get the whole thing, all the DLC for like 10, 15 bucks. Definitely recommend it. The game is extremely addictive, super fun, very simple, has co-op. Uh, this is a great game to add to your collection. Very small download size. You can keep it installed all the time. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe if you like this video. Like the video, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you again soon.